Today on The Topping Show, Vivek on Taylor Swift being propped up by the media goes viral. Carrie Lake turned down a bribe last week and is still going viral as well. Bud Light Tyler Kelsey tweet winner is Dill Mulvaney. Clack activists vandalized the Mona Lisa. Ford CEO is committed to making an affordable V8 sports car. And Microsoft has multiple outages. All of that and much more on The Topping Show. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of Topping Show is sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value added reseller and services company with a special preference to IT security. Heck, I see their founder at least twice a day. Gotta say he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me, you see, that's the joke. If you're an IT there or a business owner, reach the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, we're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of January, so click that button. I greatly appreciate it. Now, going over to the business part of the podcast, you have the Ford CEO committed to making the V8 affordable as well as in a sports car. I must admit, I don't normally tear up when I'm reading articles and looking at industry trends, but seeing this sliver, glimmer of hope made my heart swell. Some might debate three times. I still need to see a doctor about that. But in all seriousness, Jim Farley is perhaps the last CEO committed to the muscle car and Granted, I think we could say confidently the Mustang won the Pony War. All the other competitors have acquiesced to boring, sleepless technologies or technologies that really put you to sleep. You have the Chevrolet Camaro, which I thought had great styling. A couple of models were made in the USA. You still had a stick shift and V8 to the last day you could buy it. But the Camaro, throughout its history, has died a couple of times. They have resurrected the model a couple of times. And there's been prior history years you couldn't even purchase a Camaro. And... General Motors and their infinite, what's the opposite of wisdom? Moron, uh, what's it, how do you describe Mary Brower, the CEO? Uh, blindness, um, blurry eyed, foolishness. In their lack of understanding what the customer wants, they have decided to kill the Camaro again. And this time they say the Camaro will come back as again, remember the Camaro is a pony car, V8, stick shift, Mustang, beating sometimes. And the Camaro is now gonna come back as an EV two door SUV. And for the most, for many of the muscle car community, they died a little inside. It was an abomination to what was one of the greatest automotive icons in U.S. history. You also have the Dodge Challenger, which again, very similar to the Camaro, had died and come back a couple times throughout its model production history. And for the longest time, you could get the Challenger with a V8, good old, and as well, keep in mind, it's a Hemi. So you get a V8 Hemi with a stick shift. Now granted, the take rate wasn't that high, but it had a phenomenal exhaust note. And in terms of giving the consumers what they wanted, I would argue that the Challenger had the best of every world. They started around 26 grand, all the way up to over 100 grand, depending on how much power you want to put into it, Get, which is a great way to address multiple markets and meet multiple desires of multiple consumers. But again, in foolishness, Delantis, the new parent company of Chrysler Group, which again, Chrysler owns Dodge, they decided, you know what? We're going to try that, make an EV, and maybe we'll have a straight six engine, aka six cylinders and turbo combustion engine, which is good for BMW, which you can, they have decades of perfecting that engine platform is what the consumers want. But again, going from a V8 Hemi to a inline six automatic transmission, that is, that, that's one of the saddest things I've heard, to be frank. But thankfully, one CEO has the fortitude, has the integrity to give the customers what they want. That is Jim Farley, the CEO of Ford Motor Company. Now, he specifically was interviewed a couple weeks ago they're, you know, everyone's talking about, hey, you know, all your competitors are making hybrids, making EVs, they're killing their sports cars. The new Corvette's going to be, the new Corvette is automatic only, and then they're also going to make a hybrid and then EV, which is abomination in and of itself. And Ford just kind of said, you know what? We're going to keep making it. Now, he literally said they're, they're committed to V8 Mustangs regardless of what others do. When asked for additional comment, he said, quote, if we're the only one on the planet making a, a V8 affordable sports car for everyone else in the world, so be it, unquote. Which, again, a wise man once said, you don't truly know someone until they're put under pressure, or you don't know someone's character until it's tested. The whole industry is going against them. Everyone else is acquiescing to EVs and killing their most iconic brands. But Jim Farley is keeping that dream alive. So you can still buy a stick shift V8 Mustang as I believe every Mustang should be by default. Now, they are also giving a lot of consumers different 
models in terms of options. So the price point can basically be as cheap as you want to the most expensive what you want within moderate reason. And it'll be interesting to see again, Mustang is going to celebrate its 60th anniversary this year. And he said, let me see when asked for additional comment, Chris, or sorry, um, Ms. Farley, Jim Farley said, quote, Mustang is going to be, celebrate its 60th anniversary coming up this year. A lot of our competitors have left. They've come and gone. We never did that. We've always been there with Mustang 60 years and it's changed and it's changed over time, unquote. Which, to be clear, yes, there were some dark years. Let's, let's kind of forget about the 80s and 90s, which, granted, that was the EPA kneecapping automotive companies, so they couldn't make fun stuff. But we shan't talk about the 80s Mustang and Camaro. Those were, uh, those were hard times in the automotive community. They were um, very little horsepower, very low performance. But at least they still came with a stick shift, so you had a modicum of fun when you are actually driving the thing, things. Now, when asked for additional comment, he said, quote, we have the ego boost, we have the dark horse now, and we're going to continue to invest. And if we're the only one on the planet making a, four, a V8 affordable sports car for everyone in the world, so be it, unquote. Again, it, there's something about a CEO, and again, he's a racer, he gets into cars, he actually drives, has fun. You can always tell kind of which CEOs are really invested in the company, really passionate about it, and which others are just, you know, clocking in and clocking out to do the, what seemingly is the bare minimum of effort, or bare minimum of thought, like many of his competitors. So it is refreshing to see a little bit of hope as the whole many automotive industries are being pushed into making electric vehicles. And I can't but think, if I had an additional budget, if I want a new sports car with a lot of horsepower, and I want something that was American made, it's hard to find something more compelling these days than a gold Mustang. Let me know in the comments. So this is, is this enough to inspire you to go buy a Mustang? Is this something that you think they're going to stick to this for many years. I mean, there was a time when the CEO of Dodge, he said they will never make an EV, they'll make V8s forever. Now, granted, he wasn't the head of the company and their Dodge is under a parent, under a parent. So again, perhaps that's why they pressured him. But I hope the Ford family, which again, if you look at the voting shares of Ford Motor Company, you and I can buy you know shares of Ford, sure. But if you want to actually know who controls the company, the Ford Motor Company is still controlled by the family in terms of their voting shares. So I hope the Ford family also commits to giving the customers what they want and keeps the good old American muscle and the V8 alive. Now going over to the culture part of the podcast, you have a Bud Light Super Bowl Tyler Kelsey video winner is, well, Dylan Mulvaney. Now, I don't know how much he really trusts Mr. Tyler Kelsey. A lot of people are ridiculing him online for being a, I believe the youth call it a sellout, pushing multiple products, basically just get paid and just looking inauthentic. I don't know how much you can really trust him. He doesn't even name his, it doesn't even spell his name right. I and mean, his name is Tyler Kelsey. And it's spelled K-E-L. Not only does he have, a, have two first names, which are suspicious enough, but his name is spelled K-E-L-C-E. -E. I don't know about that. That's almost as ridiculous as someone being named Topping. Oh, wait. Nevertheless. Now, going to the actual video from Bud Light. And again, this is from their ex-Twitter profile. And as youth might say, what's the opposite of going viral? It went... Sluggish? Not very good. Now, they have a little text before they have this rudimentary video of, what is this? Some sports balls team? They have a KC on it. I don't think this, uh, that, uh, interestingly enough, he does not own the team, to be clear. The team's name is KC on the helmet. Hmm. Now, the text before the actual video says, cheers to, well, oh, geez, Louise. So, they hashtag two people. Let's pull them up here. And I was, well, I have to give Bud Light a modicum of credit. Granted, not much, but they actually did successfully tag Tyler Kelsey in their social media post. A couple weeks ago, they tag, They were talking about some sports balls player. I believe it was Emmett. But nevertheless, they didn't tag him, which, again, if it's a sports ball enthusiast or sports ball, you know, Hall of Famer who has a big following on X Twitter, if you have a modicum of intelligence, you're going to tag them so that their audience can see it as well. Or in that case, you would tag them so that their audience can be disappointed and humiliated by seeing them in a Bud Light commercial. Now, it looks like they tagged George Kittle, who looks like he's standing next to a bear in his profile picture. Well, it's just, that is, this is disappointing. It looks like he's a fellow University of Iowa alumni, and he went to, now he's on the San Francisco 49ers. Going from Iowa to San Francisco? A little disappointing. And then they also did, again, tag Mr. Tyler, wrong name, Kelsey. Let me pull up his profile. I'll touch screens. Tyler Kelsey. 
has 1.1 million followers, going quite viral. I believe most people know him for just being stuck or trapped, or some might debate dating. Was that a country gal, or allegedly country gal, uh, Taylor Swift, who is in no way relation related to the Swiffer company with the actual kitchen gear? A marketing idea. I, I can't believe there's not a brand endorsement yet. I mean, that's that's just leaving money on the table. Of all the times to have a brand endorsement, that that seems like an easy money. Just Swift. I mean, it writes itself, folks. But again, we know some marketing companies they don't want to go all out with the creativity. Now, getting back to this original one, they say, "Cheers, hashtag George Kittle and Tyler Kelsey, Super Bowl fifty-seven or eight, whatever it is, isn't ready for you." What? See you in Vegas. We'll bring the beers. Interesting. So they're insinuating the Super Bowl game is not ready for these gentlemen. Are they still setting up the stadium? I thought the sports ball's event of the year was in February. So it should be, I guess, around the corner in a week or two. We'll see you in Vegas. We'll bring the beer. Well, that's not much incentive. Are they trying to tell them not to come to the game? Right? Yeah. Who? If someone told you, we're going to have a party, we'll have Bud Light here, would that incentivize you to accelerate your pace of walking or driving to the party? Or would you subsequently drive in the opposite direction? Those are fair questions to ask. Now, it looks like this is only about 15 seconds long. It's not too bad. So we'll play what they appear to be a video of them. Oh, geez, Louise. They don't know volume control, so that was way up. So They say the Super Bowl rematch you've been waiting for, which I, I don't think anyone is waiting for this. I mean, who's in the Super Bowl this year? The San Francisco 49ers versus the Kansas City Chiefs. I, I I, think everyone's just surprised the Patriots aren't in there. Granted, I know Tom Brady isn't playing the sports balls anymore, but it, they say everyone is waiting for this, but have we? Have they? I, I don't think so. I mean, I only know the San Francisco 49ers because they're sponsored or their stadium is brand sponsored by Levi Strauss, which is a use case at the time for Ruba Networks, which I used to work for back in the day. So I know of sports balls sometimes. All right, so they, this is allegedly the game we've been waiting for. <laughs> Cheers, Kittle and Kelsey. Again, spelled wrong. <laughs> doing, doing some type of sports ball hand gestures. I don't know what that means in the sports balls arena. They say, see you in Vegas. <laughs> oh, he spiked the ball, that's original. I, I never saw that before. I we might have to save this video for highlights later. Oh, they do wrap up the video with a big logo of Bud Light. And yet they still didn't go all out. Uh, oh, they have one second, maybe. No, they didn't. I still expect them, again, for how much money Bud Light is paying to be the official beer of the sports balls event of the century in the league. Or not century, the year. Let's be honest, no one's going to remember this in 18 months. But nevertheless... Why wouldn't they have it spelled out? Because some people do need it spelled out. Be like, the official beer of the NFL. Or, in this case, the teams. Well, they offer all the teams. But, perhaps I'm alone with this assessment. Everyone, maybe everyone in the comments is exuberantly happy. They're inspired to go buy some beer because this sports balls game is coming. And they can't... I mean, I suppose I don't know how many people would enjoy it sober. You pretty much... I would guess you have to be inebriated to enjoy the game unless you own the game, own the sports balls team, and you're thoroughly invested in the company. But... Nevertheless, let's go down into the comments. Again, I took the statistics 24 after hours after it was posted. So they had plenty of time to brew, pun moderately intended. This got 7,391 views and only 88 likes, which means not even the people who work at Anheuser Bush and Bev liked the post, which got kind of funny in and of itself. First response, and it only got 17 responses. And of course, if we do click the button or if we look around, we do see that there's a button for a super, super, super secret comment that Bud Light doesn't want us to see. Obviously, we're going to click that button and see what it is. Now, the first actual comment comes from Scott S., who looks like, I'm guessing, an alcoholic, allegedly. And he says, socked and ready. And it looks like, I don't know if this is a personal bar or if he's at a bar, but there is a... Huh? Maybe it is personal. It is what looks like a bar, and inside the fridge below the bar... There is cans of Bud Light next to Diet Coke and Monster Energy. All equally as delicious. Haha, -ha, that was a joke. They're all disgusting beyond all belief. And looks like he says stocked and ready. 
Now, Bud Light responded, they can't spell. They said, let's go. There's only one O in go. Though perhaps if you have the thought of Bud Light on your mind, you would want to emphasize going away from it. You might want to be bombastically saying go. But Bud Light didn't like this response. So they responded, but they didn't like it. Pathetic. They couldn't even take the one one thousandth of a second to like this person's response for being nice enough to say something nice about Bud Light. That's a rare thing, you remember. Not a lot of people are saying that these days. Yet yeah, they couldn't take one one thousandth of a second. You know what? I bet the people in this video are more awesome as well as better acclimated with technology to take that sec one one thousandth of a second because I bet you will like this video. Perhaps. Probably. Maybe. Statistically speaking, more than two people will. Let's see if we can... I don't know if they think that's the average. But nevertheless, if you like this video, I would appreciate it. Now again, Bud Light just said, let's go and it, let's go to this person's profile. Because again, I don't know if he's at working at a bar or if he has a mini bar at home. There's also hard liquor on the top of the bar. He has some type of bastardized Mandalorian helmet with red painted on it. So I'm guessing he's a fan of sports balls. They have, so go to Scott's profile. He's stand, he's been on X Twitter since 2009, so it's not like a new profile overnight. He has 48 followers. His name, the actual hashtag, is Legendary AZ. Interesting. Although, if you're truly legendary, are you taking time to tweet pictures of Bud Light? No, we obviously not. The picture of him is guessing his kid dressed up as San Francisco 49ers sports ball apparel, which some may allege child abuse because of the losing factor of the team. Almost if I can't imagine someone actually dressing up a child in a Chicago Bears uniform. I mean, you're just programming the child to be a disappointment from day one. But nevertheless, the long, what we call it, the background picture is of, looks like to be him standing in front of a Super Bowl sign. And he is a proud dad of five boys. There you go, doing something right. And Foyter Niners faithful. Although he doesn't even live in the city, which is kind of funny. He's in Arizona. But nevertheless, he's still faithful to that mediocre team. But nevertheless, going in his profile, scrolling through. It's. We might, have to, might have to print this out. It is real. So he's actually. Oh, wait. Uh, he's only moderately mentally vacuous. I had to scroll a little bit, but then, yes, he just, went, he just wants free stuff. He also supports Marvel and Disney because he wants to win that stuff. He retweets everything for Bud Light. But he does have authentic, like, real pictures of, you know, his life and some. Well, I don't want to say high level commentary, but some ori moderately original comments. Lenny wants a free bluey Xbox? So someone who wants a lot, he does want a lot of free crap, but he does seem to have a modicum of independent thought. Not a lot, but I'll be interested. I'm fascinated. The first comment is actually of a real person. Now, going back to the Bud Light, let's see here. C. Mill says, quote, not an apology. That got zero likes, interestingly enough. Let's see here. This person has to be the saddest person. I, wait a minute. Joshua Mason replied, saying, quote, I drove 1,200 miles to Kansas City to get this. I'm in Maine, you know, little parentheses, and I think, I can't think of a better excuse to open them up. So he drove all the way, I guess, is he, hopefully he's going to be attending the game. There's a picture of just a 24 pack of beer. And I don't want to say he's mentally vacuous, but he did spend money on beer with the Kansas Chiefs logo plastered on it which does show the marketing brilliance of some brand endorsements and licensing agreements. He has a physical, he has emotional attachment to buy this product because his sports balls brand is plastered all over it, which I'm not saying he should have an IQ chest or we should question if he has the ability to drive to 1,200 miles, given that level of intellect, but that is interesting. And Bud Light did respond and they did like it. So Bud Light are finally becoming perhaps less inebriated as they interact with folks. So Bud Light responded saying, it's time, and they, it looks like someone did like his post. A couple of gifts of the San Francisco 49ers. And then we get to the real responses, aka the ones that have more than one or zero likes. Now, one comes from Democrat Airhead. And interesting enough, F for marketing, his hashtag or his at symbol is Biden Lemming. Yet the profile picture is not of a lemming or Biden or anything at all. It's just in a, a letter A. Which, of all the letters alphabet, I would presume he would have used letter D or something, but nevertheless, he did respond with a GIF, and it is of Dil Mulvaney in all pink, dressed up as a girl with pink, what do you call it, heart-shaped glasses, standing next to the, some might say a groomer, a teacher who encourages children not to talk to their parents 
and to instead talk to them when it comes to sexual questions. Some might call that alarmingly and concerning. I can't, I think 12 people might say no, and that would be even concerning in and of itself. Again, anyone who um, tries to sever the connection between children and their parents, probably a big red flag. Well, that's not the color they would use, but nevertheless, that got four likes, and thus far is one of the top ones. Rob Fila responded with a gif, or excuse me, say a gif, of Dylan Mulvaney dressed up as Audrey Hepburn, and there's a picture of Dylan Mulvaney opening the can of Bud Light with a smile as awkward as Ron DeSantis or myself. It'd be a rough contest, but it's in that realm. That did get two likes. P2 Hair Tortoise Shell? I don't know what that is, but nevertheless, they said, quote, screw your transfluid, unquote. They got one like. Now, let's see here. Dave M says, quote, you bring the beers, but no one will drink them except groomers, unquote. That got six likes. Let's see. Dr. Souza Tashani says, quote, save your money. You are irrelevant and no one wants to see whatever BS the public idiots, the public are idiots campaign you cooked up, unquote. I got six likes. Dr. Suska again said, quote, the only way to win people back is if your SB campaign apologized to the pe pe American people, admits your faults, and says you don't support woke. But you won't. Instead, you insult our intelligence with Clydesdales, American flags, and bullshit. Fake, 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 fake. Unquote. Quite a lot of fakes. That could get six likes. This person also retweeted a gif of just the word spelled out, gay, flashing all over the screen. That got five likes. DT says, quote, I would rather drink my own urine than Bud Light, unquote. That got five likes and is accompanied by a gif of what looks to be a beer fizzing on the table, which, talk about an awkward would-you-rather question. That would be a debate in and of itself if you were to bring that question up during the night. Let's see here. There's a big, there's a little warning sign. Show, show responses that may be offensive. Of course, bonus question, bonus responses, rather. Let's see here. Old Charlie Dog responded, ain't no one want trans beer. Now, grammatical errors aside, I was going to say no, someone liked it, but they didn't. Because again, by that grammar, that means they do want it. Again, a double negative is important. And grammar does matter, folks. Let's see. CPC2023 had a picture of a photoshopped can of Bud Light with the word on top of the logo, again, the iconic blue can saying training fluid, that got four likes. And then if we go to the very top of the post, there's that little big button that says, you know, show the ones that Bud Light is hiding themselves. Of course, we're going to click that button, see what they're really hiding. And here's a picture of, I forget what government official, but it is CPAC 2020, or CPC 2023, we posted it, and it is the picture of the government official being serviced in the public in the government building and the person behind the person being serviced is holding a Bud Light aluminum can. Perhaps we should just be thankful that they're showing us the can in the hand and not where it presumably ended up. But nevertheless, that did not get any likes. It got 22 views though before it was a super hidden by Bud Light. So they're paying this Tyler Kelsey more money than we could possibly fathom. Probably a year's American salary and for per second of video, something ridiculously high in terms of price. And yet, the number one subject of all the responses are Dylan Mulvaney, who they did pay $185,000 for, I believe, two pictures and a video of Dylan consuming the product, having the iconic can celebrating 365 days of womanhood, which, in terms of business history, marketing history, that's the most expensive, perhaps most valuable product or muse future museum piece in marketing history. Again, in one fiscal quarter, they lost $400 million in sales because of that marketing campaign. Which, again, let me know in the comments. I, I've, been, I've been a book nerd or business nerd ever since I was a youth. And throughout all the books I've read, I haven't heard of a single marketing campaign that resulted in a more negative effect to the business and the brand than the Bud Light business blunder of the year last year, where they hired Dylan Mulvaney to be their brand ambassador or whatever you want to choose. And... Again, a lot of comments keep bringing up the fact that you're per giving money to a person whose average audience member on their platform, which Dylan's main platform is TikTok, is under 21 years old. So it's illegal to buy the product for the people you're trying. They're paying someone to advertise a product whose average consumer or average viewer can't consume the product. So it really didn't make any business sense. So it'll be interesting to see, culturally speaking, 
I mean, the, the sales aren't rebounding. And in terms of the cultural backlash and the social media, I mean, they're not letting up, especially for the Bud Light specific brand on social media. We've seen a little bit of acquiesce on other other brands that they own, such as Budweiser, Michelob Ultra, which again, all the individual handles on X Twitter, you see a little bit less negative responses to the comments, but they're still there. So it'll be interesting to see as we get off to the new year, as Bud Light continues to spend more money, will they score a touchdown or perhaps more likely than not, just continue to throw, as youth might say, interceptions or get sacked. As always, it'd be fascinating to hear what you have to say, but as I always say also, time shall tell. Other interesting cultural news, you have climate actors vandalize the Mona Lisa as we see the museum security continue to be a joke, to say the least. Now, this comes to us thanks to a ex-Twitter account by the name of End Wokeness, and they said, quote, climate activists just saved the just saved the planet. They threw soup on the Mona Lisa, unquote, which, yeah, it's always fascinating to see. Not only the hypocrisy, since most of the time they use paint or and oil, other oil-based products for their vandalism, but if you, I can't list a single accomplishment that these, some might argue, terrorists have accomplished ever. Not just, you know, in terms of their activities, but also in their life. You really don't see a lot of them, you know, making a dent in the universe, as I would say. Now, these people, two individuals, I can't tell. Let's see here. So there's a little video. Let's see. <laughs> Hmm. So they look exactly as you would expect. Let's just say it's fascinating. You never see a masculine figure in these instances. You never see like a jacked guy going along with them or ever at a protest. It's almost as if they have better things to do, like a job or hitting the gym or family or friends. But nevertheless, thankfully, the Mona Lisa is behind bulletproof glass, but they're able to sneak. A, again, I don't know how inept these government or these employees are, or these government entities are, since most of them are owned by the government and they're public for it to be viewed. But again, these things just keep happening. I can't decide if the security is either lazy or inept, inept, or just moronic. Because again, not only do they allow hazardous things like cans of paint, in this case, cans of soup and hammers, to get into museums, but they're also nowhere to be found to stop them. Again, I can't help but think a brilliant way to solve this would be actually have armed security or any security with a modicum of intelligence, either pre-screening or just standing there and actually punishing these people, which there are many variables as to why this thing continues to happen, but is morally and mentally vacuous to say the least. Now, as youth might say, this went viral. It got 6.4 million views in 24 hours, which is astronomically successful. Now, it also got 31,000 likes as well, which is a fun little reminder to click this like button on this video to see, I mean, statistically speaking, we won't get 31,000 likes. That would be, granted, a wise pilot once said, never tell me the odds, but they would be pretty small. However, every like is appreciated, so if you do that, I would greatly appreciate you. Or a down vote and a comment if you didn't like the video, so I know how to improve. Nevertheless, going to the comments, the first one comes from Paul Zuppa, says, quote, the Mona Lisa is behind bulletproof glass, so it's fine. These climate activists never will be. Their stunts offend people and push them away from considering the cause being promoted. Ironically, these stunts cause pollution because of the wasted time and effort they they solve, involve, rather. Unquote. That got 1.8 thousand likes. Mark said, quote, Make mental asylums great again is a gif for a rather juxtaposition of two pictures of the doctor. And doctor, the guy says to the doctor, Doctor, I've been depressed because the weather... Uh, I'm depressed because of the weather in 30 years. And the doctor responds, says, quote, have you tried destroying priceless artwork, unquote. They got 5.1 thousand likes. Let's see here. Caillou says, quote, giant wave is a mercy compared to them. And it's a picture saying, and the picture is a gif of a wave versus a juxtaposition of, I forget the main, what's the main, what's the main orc from Lord of the Rings? I forgot. Oh no, it's Greta Thunberg. Oh, it's close. And the picture, the text says, quote, poll finds most people would rather be annihilated by a giant tidal wave than continue to be lectured by climate change activists, unquote. They got 2,000 likes. Let's see. Adam Luisk 
says, quote, The woke are not so much better than the Muslims who destroyed the Assyrian statues in Iraq or the Buddhas of Afghanistan because they're viewed as idolatry. The woke are religious fundamentalists, unquote. They got 1,000 likes. Rapid sloth, though, F minus for marketing, the picture is not even of a sloth. Though one would wonder, how would a sloth be rapid? Nevertheless, this alleged sloth says, quote, make it sounds great again. It is a picture of a gal in the great what, the straight jacket. And the text is, we didn't have all these psycho liberals running around back when we had Satan asylums, unquote. Like a 755 likes. Although that's also because we didn't have indoctrination mechanisms like colleges and public schools weren't so... What's the nice way of saying infected? They were so inebriated, they were so interconnected with ideological ideals versus what used to be just teaching children zeros and ones, just numbers, strict actual real history. Nevertheless, let's see here. Caillou also replied with a gif saying radical climate activists interrupt a snooker match. And some mentally vacuous person jumps on a pool table or a snooker table Picture says just stop oil and they throw orange powder everywhere. They got 180 likes though. See here. Let's see. Jason Hambrick said, quote, their punishment should be five year labor at an oil refinery, unquote. That got 823 likes and my seal of approval for an interesting and ironic punishment, which granted you have to monitor them quite thoroughly because yeah, they probably never had a job or worked, but they also have to make sure they're not sabotaging the oil refinery as well. But that would be an interesting idea. Let's see here. The Kyle Reese says, quote, wow, after seeing that, I certainly need to take their cause seriously. Said no one ever, unquote. I got 847 likes, which again, as soon as any movement or ideology gets violent or they start putting van to vandalize things, you automatically lose a bunch of support whatever the topic is. So again, it's ironic that these keep backfiring. I don't know. I mean, it's just not going to gain any effect. It's also when they just sit in the street asking to be run over when it's in high, tra high density, high speed traffic. And yet they sit in the street to interrupt the flow of traffic, which is extremely dangerous. Cause again, you don't know you, again. Oh, well, I was gonna say a lot of these people are small well, in America. They're not, but some of these people, these, activists are just they're pretty small so if you're driving really fast you might not see them and the person behind the car might it it's just ask it's very dangerous situation and you also make everyone late for work who actually has a job so again i'm not sure why well i guess we don't know why it keeps happening because the museums have no security or they don't enforce the rules and the judges actually don't prosecute the crime i mean why not again if this is in the united states this is a european museum they are pretty much lawlessness but nevertheless can't but think a great way to stop all this would be to have a guard. Especially if this is, again, one of the most valuable pieces of art in the world of all time. I can't help but think not only to send a message to just to actually say to prospective vandals that we will not stand this, but also just to do the right thing to guard that piece of history. Have a guard stand right there. I mean, ideally you get a Marine because those are hard to beat. In American museums, we should definitely do that. We have plenty of veterans who would benefit from that, and it would preserve history, which unfortunately is gaining, or rather losing support throughout the years as more and more people fail to realize the importance and significance of history. But it'll be interesting to see if this problem ever does resolve itself, but culturally speaking, unfortunately I don't see a lot of appetite for it as we see more and more climate activists and more vandals want to destroy pieces of art. But let me know, comments, how would you fix this particular cultural problem? And do you think, at the end of the day, will one of these morally, mentally vacuous people actually succeed in their, in their goal to destroy a piece of workless, a piece of priceless art? I certainly hope that won't be the end result. But I suspect it might be that, would, that, that act that actually takes these museums to wake up and do something to pro, be proactive to stop the threats. But... As I always say, time shall tell. <laughs> now going over to the political part, podcast, do you have Vivek on Taylor Swift being propped up, perhaps for an endorsement? 
Now, this comes to thanks to Vivek's personal X Twitter profile, and he responds to Jack Poso. Jack Poso says, quote, thinking about when Taylor Swift called out the Source family in 2019 for buying the rights to her music, and then how she became how she came out as super liberal in 2020. Vivek responded saying, quote, I wonder who's really going to win the Super Bowl next month, and I wonder if there's a major presidential endorsement coming from an artificially cult uh, culturally propped up candidate this fall. Just some wild speculation over here. Let's see how it ages over the next eight months, unquote. And granted, that tweet was a couple days ago, but they did get 1.4 million views and 13,000 likes. Let's see here. Now, one of the first response comes, actually, I guess we can reflect on that for New York Minute. Yeah, I can't help but realize and see every time there's a checkout at a grocery store, every, like, more than half of the magazine covers have Taylor Swift's face plastered on it. She is being used as a mechanism to also increase the sales of NFL sports balls tickets as women worship her like a god. And I suppose they do have 18 men who appreciate her as well for her music. I think I met one once, but nevertheless, she's going viral, as the youth might say, and every day of the week, that's all the media is talking about is Taylor Swift, or as the youth might call her, T-Swift, or as a future brand ambassador of the Swiffer Picker Upper, they may call her Squeaky T-Swift. Pun moderately intended. And again, she has gotten out the vote before, I believe, was it 2000, what the year was it? Sure, she, I think she did, I know The Rock, or I think 18 people call him Dwayne Johnson, I remember he told people to go out and vote for Biden a couple of years ago. Which again, there's nothing more brilliant than a rock. But let me see here. Did Taylor Swift vote for Biden? Well, let's see here. Okay, in 2020, she said she would probably vote for Biden. She says, I guess this is a quote from her. Under their leadership, I believe America has a chance to start the healing process it so desperately needs. Unquote. Which shows the mental vacuousness of Taylor Swift. She thought that would heal America and make the world a better place. Now, statistically speaking, has that happened? There's been more violence, more inflation. So, I, again, it did help get out the vote last time, but... I mean, I, I guess her fans do worship her. They very well may assist the campaign in, for the 2024 election. And again, there's a lot of speculation of how much would that help... How much is being paid for that? But let's go in the comments to see what the people are going on. The first comes from Luke Zaliski, who is a leftist who is very consistent with his posting on all the Republican nominees, oh, former Republican nominees for presidential election. He is, uh, as youth might say, very active. Now, he says, and again, look at his background, his post, and look at his profile, he's very much left politically, ideologically speaking. He says, quote, responding to Vivek, says, quote, it's just another mega hustle to stay relevant like a Kindergartner acting like he doesn't want the girl he's crushing on in hopes he'll trick her into liking him. Trump's insecure brand of fascism requires constant attention and seeks to insert itself into every situation, unquote. Now, believe it or not, that did get some of the most likes. That got 693 likes. Kindergart like him. Which again, he's saying it's a mega hustle to stay relevant. I don't think Vivek is taking time out of his day to make money with this statement because, again, he's built multiple successful businesses. He's worth millions upon hundreds of millions of dollars. And, again, by Vivek saying this, I don't see how he would monetize it or gain any real monetary value of it. Now, it looks like going to responses of Luke. Let's see here. A lot of them are calling, wondering if he's a parody. A couple of people are agreeing with him. A lot of people, a couple of people are roasting uh, Trump and Vivek. But overall, a lot of people kind of calling him out, which given the sample size of people who follow Vivek, I would say makes sense. Now, other top responses comes from Mike Engelman. He says, quote, it's rigged, unquote, getting 386 likes. Mark Jeffrey says, quote, yeah, I had the same thought. Nothing feels organic about Taylor's rise or the whole relationship. And now the whole Super Bowl thing, unquote, getting 271 likes, which again, if you've only, if you've been living under a rock, it, let's just say, if I know this, I would venture to say even my parents or someone in East Africa would know this. Taylor Swift is dating the quarterback, Tyler Kelsey, of the sports balls teams, which is the 49ers, which San Francisco has a, has a football team, which is a success, 
statistically speaking, I think it's as successful as the city of San Francisco as well. Haha, business economic joke. They've lost a lot of businesses past 48 months, especially. Which again, given her music is astonishing how many people allegedly have connected with her style and paid her so much money. She's one of the first, I believe, billionaire artists as well, if you want to call it art. I mean, her success is phenomenally big. I've only met, I guess anecdotally speaking, I've met one person who loved Taylor Swift. I think my sister may listen to her a little bit, but yeah, I'd love to do an IQ test of the average person who tunes into Taylor Swift. It would be fascinating to see. I can't help but think it's the same group of people who are spending 50, 60, 75, 200 bucks dot plus for a pink Stanley Cup, which hilarious, ironically had lead in it. Now, Gunther Engelman responded, the Swifties, unquote, getting 329 likes, which is a reference to the culture built around Taylor Swift. The people who worship her call themselves Swifties. Which again, the fact that they're all not pushing those mops and there's not a commercial out yet or a parody out yet is ridiculous in and of itself. Chris Nielsen, quote, you are artificially popped up, unquote, getting 414 likes. The usual suspect bites back and says, quote, Vivek, your entire existence in the GOP is a psyop, unquote, getting 164 likes. Sabby, well, we got to check this profile out. This is an unusual statement. They got a lot of likes. Sabby Piscantilali says, LMFAO, bro, this team has been elite for six years. You must be watching cricket, unquote. Getting 511 likes, which San Francisco 49ers being an elite team? What? All right, so this profile, I don't want to say it looks weird, but it, it looks unusual. So if you go to Sabi Pescali, this person is, I don't know if this is a profile, but, but I don't know if this is a parody. This I'm reading the profile description that they chose to put themselves. Quadruple vaxxed, 13 boosters Pfizer, diversity and inclusion certified, Biden Harris 2024, LGBT flag, pride flag, Ukraine flag, Palestinian flag, he, him pronouns, joined in 2012, has 311 followers. It's not to brag, but I recently did get more than 280 followers on my personal profile on the X Twitter. And going to the profile, let's see, they are, let's see here, talking about stock trading a lot. Let's see. Well, let's see. Talking about Jim Cramer stocks. Hmm, interesting. Uh, has anyone ever called the San Francisco 49ers elite? I always put them in the same bucket or trough or dumpster as the Bears. They'll win next year, is what I'm always told. I mean, when I think of elite sports ball teams, I think of who has won. I think Tom Brady has. Nearly more rings and fingers at this point. I know he was on the Patriots, and he went to Florida, the Buccaneers, I think. But I've never heard anyone say the 49ers are exceptional. Is that a sports ball thing? Let me know in the comments. Have you heard anyone ever say that, or have you ever met a fan? And going down, we'll do one or two more comments. Polite No More says, quote, It's amazing that anyone listens to Taylor Swift or watches football. Nothing is real. Unquote, getting 40 likes. Uh... Do one more here. Samantha Ta Tango says, quote, Biden can't win without a lot of help. He's unpopular. He has a 33% approval rating. He needs to go. 25th Amendment, unquote. They got 91 likes. Actually, we'll do one more. This one got 616 likes. One ultra mega mega, who I would say A plus for marketing because the profile picture is in fact of what looks to be a AI generated picture of Donald Trump. However, He's not wearing the iconic red hat, which I was going to say, if you're an ultra mega supporter, I think that's kind of a staple of the community. It is the red hat. So this alleged ultra mega fan says, quote, lucky for the DNC, young ladies don't care about the economy, taxes, national security, or world peace. They only care about abortion and identity politics, unquote. Which statistically speaking, if you look at the demographics of voting groups, yeah, they uh, they highly vote Democrat Democratic, uh, historically speaking, and that is the group that Trump lost the most votes of going votes from going from 2016 to 2020. So talk about the upset of the year. What if again, crazy idea? I promise I'm not inebriated or drinking Bud Light. What if Taylor Swift just endorsed Donald Trump? Which 
would be so hilarious and out of character. Because again, in 2020, she did endorse uh, she did um, endorse Biden. That would be one of that would be uh, Elon once said the most entertaining outcome usually the most likely. That would be the most entertaining outcome bar none if she were to come out on stage wearing a MAGA hat saying, let's make America great again. I, it would be so out of character for Taylor Swift and her fan base. I, that would be priceless. I can't help but think, yeah, I, I, that would be priceless. I, it's not going to happen, but talk about an interesting thing if it were to happen. So again, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, it is fascinating that the whole media is continuing to prop Taylor Swift up. It got Americans to watch sports balls even more than usual. And is it all psyop at the end of the day? It'll be interesting to see, but as I normally always say, time shall tell. Other interesting political news, you have Carrie Lake turning down a bribe to stop running still weeks later, and it's still, as youth might say, viral. Now, this was originally posted by Callan Rugg over on X Twitter, and is posted actually on January 23rd, and people are still talking about it. And he says, and before the video, he says, quote, Breaking Arizona Republican Party Chair Jeff DeWitt caught on secret recording trying to bribe Carrie Lake not to run for Senate. Holy S. There, and then he starts to, let's see here. He starts to say a couple of quotes from the video. And again, it's been a few days, so it's had, had some time to gather the views and the likes. But it got 14.9 million views and 83,000 likes, which is, as youth might say, viral, which I'm actually a little disappointed that they've been using that year. That term's been used for, I think, over a decade. Surely there's some new term I don't know about. Let me know in the comments. There probably is. But we'll play the... This is one of those things where eh, there's so many conspiracy theories in politics. There's so many so many accusations, but there's so there's not always hard proof. And in this case, she actually recorded it, but perhaps this person forgot that her Carrie Lake's her original origin was reporting. But nevertheless... We'll play the first, the whole video is about six minutes long. I highly recommend going to it, check out the whole thing, but it's concerning in and of itself. We'll just play the first minute or two. Again, this is Carrie Lake on the phone, or sorry, in person, but we're hearing the recording. And then it looks like it is confirmed. This is Jeff DeWitt. Is there a number at which? I can be bought. <laughs> That's what it's about. You can take a pause for a couple of years. No. And then go right back to what you're doing. Mm -mm. No. 10 million, 20 million, third, no, no, no. A billion, no. This is not about money. This is about our country. I think it's disturbing that they would even, that anybody would think this is. I, I, no, to be fair, even me, even me, I'll say this. I want a fresh face right now. For the reason that I've never seen anyone, I can't think of a single person in a federal race who lost Randy Nairwan. I can't think of it. If you can think of it, let me know. I am not going to let these people who hate our country tell me not to run. You should call them and tell them to get behind me. So what's going on? What is, uh, I'm assuming this is our friend. Uh, this is, this is, this is back east. They, there are very powerful people Keep you out. He, he said this is back east, just to clarify. But they know what they do. But they're willing to put their money where their mouth is in a big way. So, this conversation never happened. This, this is crazy, though. They should want me. I'm a great candidate. People love me. These people are corrupt. Well, maybe you're right. They are right. They are corrupt. Maybe. This is rap. Don't, don't go. Do you ever know? I'll get myself in trouble. Do this, if you, if, you, if you say no, that's just fine. It's your choice. Don't tell people. I know. They're going to have try to have me murdered. <laughs> I not either. Today's world, man. If that stuff that came out last week is right about the cartel stuff, I mean, I hear the cartel, they the cartel's operating in 50 states right now. Like, all 50, you mm -hmm. know? So. So what, what, what's going on? Who is it? What? Forget the who. Let me just tell you what. Let's just say there are people calling around. Saying, gosh, no, they can't repeat this. Never repeat this. If you say no, don't. Because they say, I got offered to buy out. Don't, don't, yeah. Don't. Because then we lose our ability to get things done other, in the future. Here's this, my problem. 
Rather than just say, let's work with her. She's a great candidate. I, again, I don't know how dumb the morally vacuous this guy is, but again, has he never seen a single spy movie or pretty much any movie ever? Where the conversation is being recorded, like, did he even bother using the old-fashioned, like, what was it, the old wire sweeper that they use as security to see if someone's got metal on him? Like, did he even, did he just assume she wasn't mic'd? Which, again, she's a reporter, I mean, it, I, I can't fathom how dumb this guy is. Because they don't own me, and it pisses me off. Yeah, it's not always about ownership. It's about control. I don't know if it's about control. It's about being on the team. I guess that's it. You know what I mean? They want to be on the team. They want you to be on their team. But Just they're... Team. What? You know? But if they're pushing it... They want you to be on the team by not playing the game. So okay, we're going to give you money to just go sit there and do nothing. Which I would say, unfortunately, a not insignificant number of people would probably take that offer globalist agenda, I can't do that. So what do they want? What do they want me to do? You want to stay out for two years. <laughs> but, let me tell you what I can offer you. Oh. But, um, I said you can do whatever you want the talking head is. So, the, the ask of me was, it's kind of funny, so the, the ask I got today from back east was, is this, has to see is there any companies out there or something that could just put her on the payroll and give her to keep her out? And I said, well, what do you want to do? Like, whatever we need to do. This is about defeating Trump. And I think that's a bad, bad thing for our country. DeSantis is not America first. This is about the final death blow to Trump. And I don't think that's good for our country. I'm not getting you my love. I'm not love. It's not good for our country, Jeff. It's not, but at the same time. So, Slayer, I'll we'll stop it there. Again, check out the whole thing on the next Twitter. So, I mean, he admits it's not good for the country. But, like, that last question, that last statement was, you know, it's not good for the country. He goes, yeah, I agree, it's not. And he's still pushing for that action, which I guess we shouldn't be too surprised with given the, I mean, overall state of politics, which, again, the Republican Party. There's a lot of a lot of people who don't like the Republican Party, partially I suspect because there's so many rhinos or Republican in name only. And there's so many or is there is the I was gonna say the youth, the old the uh the more aged might call the turncoats. And again, this is going wildly viral. And again, it's like a piece of cinema coming to life, or truth be told, it's probably been going on our whole lives, you just didn't have a lot of concrete evidence of it. But let's go to the comments and see what are the folks saying. One of the top comments comes from Clandestein, which A plus for marketing, I must say. This is a picture of a mysterious, looks like a mysterious reporter from the 1930s or 40s in black and white with the darkness, and again, it's a cartoon, but the shade of dark is so, the sunlight reflection is so that you can't actually see the face is obfuscated. But nevertheless, Clandestine says, quote, the question people should be asking themselves is who stands to gain from Carrie Lake not being senator? This confirms Carrie Lake is looking to stop some sort of criminality that people would not be able to get away with were she elected. This is wild. Unquote. They got 15,000 likes. Kyle Norg responded saying, quote, the footage raises more questions than it answers. Unquote. Getting 8.8 thousand likes. Someone by the name of Hank says, quote, refreshing to see someone who, who won't be swayed by dollar signs. Good on Lake for not treating public service like an auction item. Other, our country's future is priceless. Unquote. I got 7.6 thousand likes. Colin Rogg responded saying, quote, I have a feeling this is going to help her polling a lot, unquote. That got 7.9 thousand likes. Western Lensman said, quote, you just know this stuff goes on all the time. Rare to see it spill out into the public view, unquote, getting 8.3 thousand likes. Lives with TikTok responded saying, holy smokes, getting 7 thousand likes. You have Luke, Z uh, uh, sorry, Par Paul Zazupa saying, quote, Jeff DeWitt may, might as well be joining the Democratic Party now. This is outrageous. I'm glad to see Carrie Lake told him to stay at, to pound sand, unquote, gaining 3.1 thousand likes. See here. Luke Zaliski chimed in. And again, he is very consistent in his posting uh, in politics. Politically speaking, if you look at his profile, his past statements, he's very much 
more on the left side of the political aisle. And he says, quote, the most effective campaign ad for Trump's VP so far, and also a damning indictment of Republican corruption, both and both make Trump very happy, which is all that matters to him. Unquote, getting 31 likes, which I actually do agree in terms of an advertisement of making someone a VP. Now, again, I think in terms of politically speaking, I think a lot of people appreciate her in where she's at right now, politically speaking, as going for Senate. And a lot of people see there's a lot of upside to that. So they wouldn't necessarily want her to take her away from that situation. But in terms of public support, I think a lot of people are going to appreciate this stand. Let's see here. Let's see here. Someone by the name of E says, quote, here's a full audio. Listen to what he said at 930. And a little quote is Carrie Lake saying, quote, I think you should go public with this. Jeff Blewett said, quote, then I turn my key in my car and boom, unquote. I got 3.6 thousand likes. Libercrat Media TM said, quote, good on Carrie Zona for not folding and instead of ending Carrie's career, DeWitt just ended his and conf confirmed the deep state establishment is very real for if he was a bleeding red Republican, he wouldn't have asked the GOP rising star to take a back seat with, with some cash for a few years. And there's a picture of a bastardized amalgamation of a donkey and a elephant. And it says the unit party. And it got 1,000 likes. Let's see here. Junita Broderick says, quote, new Democratic slogan. If you can't beat them, cheat them, or try to bribe them, unquote. Got 4,000 likes. Peacemo says, quote, Carrie Lake in response to getting bribed to, run, to not run for Senate. I'm running, quote, I'm running and I'm going to be the biggest pain in their effing asses. They're going to have to effing kill me to stop me. Unquote, gained 1.8 thousand likes. J Cash, MAGA Queen, for, or what do you call it? Orange, emo orange emoji, but no MAGA red hat, so this alleged MAGA Queen says, quote, Jeff DeWitt is a corporate slime bar, and he's fully exposed here. Carrie Lake is a complete and total badass American first patriot. Unquote. I got 1.6 thousand likes. John Rich. Said hashtag Carrie Lake just won the race while wow. getting 2.8 thousand likes. Again, so there's overwhelming positive responses down here. Again, it'll be interesting to see what the long-term ramifications is, how much this helps her out politically. And it kind of makes us think how many people might be getting bribed to run or this, or in some cases just not run, just get to pay to go sit at the sidelines for a little bit. Quite concerning to say the least. But it'll be interesting to see how many more cases do we see in the next couple of years. Time, of course, shall tell. Now, going over to the business blunder of the day, you have Microsoft having multiple outages in two days. Now, this comes to us thanks to Sir J. O. Gatlin on Bleeping Computer, as well as anecdotal, ex anecdotal experience, my own. Now, they note that Microsoft Teams hit with a second outage in three days. This article was actually posted a couple minutes or a couple days ago, rather. And they know that Microsoft is investigating a second outage affecting Microsoft Teams across North and South America in the past three days. Affected customers, again, report having connectivity issues and experiencing delays when sending and receiving messages in mobile and desktop Teams clients. When asked for comment, Microsoft said, quote, We're investigating an issue in which users may be unable to access Microsoft Teams or features within North America, Canada, or Brazil, unquote. Now, they also note that Teams users affected by these ongoing issues can find more information in an incident report tagged inspirationally tagged look at this name tm710900 in microsoft 365 admin center the company also noted that some users may be unable to access microsoft teams or some features which again microsoft 365 i always jokingly refer to it as microsoft 360 because it sure as hell isn't actually up 365 days a year and again for a lot of companies it's still over, still overwhelmingly positive benefit in terms of most businesses but again there's no such, no such thing as a silver bullet in life or hell, heck alone, definitely not in IT. So it's one of those things where this is by no means a perfect solution. Now in terms of the business blunder, how much will they hurt their sales? I suspect not too dramatically, not even by 1%, but will be a little bit, it'll affect them a little bit. Because again, there are other competitors that are built on, some would argue more robust data centers and you know, such as AWS, when you also have, I know Salesforce has their own Slack feature that they bought out. I believe Salesforce bought Slack out about 24 months ago. So Microsoft Teams, if you're not in the business world, you don't have a lot of experience with it, is basically AOL AIM chat. 
for business. Rudimentally speaking, that's what it's used for. And it's a very convenient technology. It allows you to instantly send messages to folks over them interwebs with their Microsoft Teams profiles. A lot of people use it to have team collaboration as well as vendor and partner you know, collaboration. So there are a lot of benefits to it and a lot of companies are standardized on it. That being said, there are also a lot of competitors. You know, Zoom is trying to push that feature more and more, not just Zoom meetings, but you can have Zoom communications. So there are other competitors to it. And again, the Microsoft reps, they're all pushed to sell E5, which is the most expensive all-encompassing licensing and packages. And a lot of people argue a lot of the benefits is Microsoft Teams because you can interact with everyone or darn near everyone because it's so many people standardized on it. And people rely on Teams. I mean, imagine not being able to talk to anyone in your company using your standard communication feature for a whole day or days. You have to, heaven forbid, you actually have to pick up a phone and dial them, which in some cases they don't even have individual phone numbers for people at companies because it's so rarely used. So to have such a big instance where, again, a company that is the most valuable company on the planet, they're really over worth, they pass, I believe, a $3 trillion value for a publicly traded company. They have seemingly unlimited resources to build out data centers, to have not just you know regular connectivity, but not just redundancies of second or third or fourth, multiple failovers. To have an instance where they keep having these outages, even in they're a tech company, this is what they do sometimes. To have all those outages, have one of your main products just go offline, unable to use for whole continents. I gotta say, that is certainly the business blunder of the day. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Again, by the end of February, we're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers. So if you click that button, I greatly really appreciate it. Also, leaving a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback on how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe, fight the good fight.